They were unlikely allies, Franklin Roosevelt, Winston Churchill, and Joseph Stalin, the three men who banded together to win the Second World War. Jim Axelrod has the tale of their first meeting and a possible Nazi plot meant to change the course of history. Without warning, by air, by land and water, the most terrible of all blitzkrieg so far, Nazi forces overrun neutral Holland, Belgium and Luxembourg. 1943, Hitler's army, mired in the brutal conditions of the Eastern Front in Russia, is finally showing some cracks. Even in these days, when war news is changing so greatly to our advantage, it's wise not to forget or underrate Germany's strength. To coordinate strategy essential to turning the tide, with the fate of the free world hanging in the balance, FDR, Churchill, and Stalin planned their first ever face-to-face -face meeting. Why was a summit so important? This is the moment where the big three have to get on the same page. They got to discuss troop movements. They got to discuss logistics. More important, they got to discuss strategy and morale. When the Nazis learn of the summit, they hatch an audacious plan. They're going to kill FDR and Churchill and Stalin in one shot, a triple assassination that's going to change the course of the entire war. This little known and still never fully verified Nazi conspiracy is the subject of a new book by best-selling authors Brad Meltzer and Josh Mensch. We met with Meltzer at FDR's home in Hyde Park, New York. The Allies defeating the Nazis, that was not a foregone conclusion in 1943, was it? It seems so obvious now. It's one of those moments in history where the United States did good, did the right thing, and saved the day. But it didn't almost go that way. The Soviets were shouldering the heaviest burden of any of the Allies. Stalin was desperate. The Nazis had surrounded Leningrad in a brutal siege. There are nearly a million people who die. The starvation starts immediately. There's nothing to eat. So they're looking at their dogs, they're looking at rats, and then they're looking at each other. To relieve pressure on the Eastern Front, Stalin wanted FDR and Churchill to open a Western Front by invading Nazi-held France, an idea Churchill had been resisting. The whole world knew, or at any rate guessed, that the Anglo-American Soviet conference was on, but the location, Tehran, was still a secret as the aircraft converged onto the Persian capital. Stalin proposed meeting in Tehran for the end of November to discuss it, a proposal that didn't stay secret. The Nazis had actually cracked international cables between Winston Churchill and FDR. They cracked our codes. When the war started, Tehran was German controlled. By 1943, the Soviets and British held it, though many Nazi sympathizers remained. In Meltzer's telling, on the eve of the summit, the Nazis parachuted a team of assassins into Tehran. We captured many of them. There are six still on the loose. Enter a man named Mike Riley, the head of FDR's Secret Service detail. We're truly 24 hours from the summit, and the Soviets tell him, listen, we think someone's going to kill the big three. With Churchill already safely ensconced in the British embassy near the Russian compound in the city, Riley makes a crucial decision to move FDR from the American camp where he's staying in the desert outside Tehran to the more secure Soviet embassy. Secret Service agent Mike Riley. He's the guy who looked the Russians in the eyes, heard the evidence, and thought FDR and Stalin and Churchill, their lives are in danger. They could be killed in this moment. And FDR agrees, and Winston Churchill agrees. But getting FDR through the city with Nazi assassins possibly on the route, required a daring drive and a crucial bit of deception. The person in the motorcade is not FDR. FDR is hiding in a junky old car that's racing through another part of the city where there potentially are six snipers, six paratroopers. They're somewhere out there. And it's the greatest thing you can ever use. It's like any magician uses. It's distraction. And they get him to that Russian embassy so that they can start that summit. During the last two days in Tehran, Marshal Stalin, Mr. Churchill, and I looked ahead 
ahead to the days and months and years that will follow Germany's defeat. The Americans got what they wanted, FDR safety, but so did the Soviets. Why would the Soviets want to have him? FDR's room is bugged. There's microphones in the walls, there's microphones in the carpet. When Nazi agents were rounded up the same day, Meltzer writes, a spy sent a message back to Berlin. The plot had been discovered. Maybe the assassins were ordered to stand down. Or maybe the Soviets made up the entire story to eavesdrop on FDR. Either way, the summit went on safely. Do you feel there is enough evidence that supports the idea that the plot existed? No, I don't think there is enough evidence, at least not enough hard evidence, enough objective evidence. Historian Lynn Olson has not only read Meltzer's book, she's written bestsellers about World War II herself. Mike Riley says it happened. Mike Riley only knows what a Russian official told him. His top priority, his only priority, was to keep Roosevelt safe. It fit into his plans or it fit into his uh, wishes perfectly. As an intellectual exercise, is there anything wrong with asking, what if? Oh, gosh, no. No, there is absolutely nothing wrong with asking, what if? Problem is, when you raise what ifs, but you're acting like it's real. But it might have been better as a novel? It might have been better as a novel. The summit paved the way for an ally victory. It's physically the moment where Winston Churchill finally says, you're right, I'm in. Normandy's going to happen. When FDR returned home from Iran, he told reporters, I got word from Marshal Stalin. They had word of a German plot. Those aren't anyone else's words. That's the president's words. And that's good enough for Brad Meltzer. If you can't be 100% sure that this actually happened, why write the book? Because the story still exists, whether I write it or not. We know for sure that the Secret Service said there's a plot to kill him. You, just because it didn't happen doesn't mean the story didn't exist. That's a story worth investigating.